All right, so in Creative Programming 1, we saw lots of ways of loading and displaying images, of grabbing sections of them. Uh, but what we didn't talk about is the more fundamental unit of, um, of images, which are pixels. And in this series of demos, we're going to be looking at lots of different ways that you can access and change those values. You can look at a pixel's neighbor, um, neighboring values to make changes, and lots of other really cool, crazy, freaky, weird stuff that we can do. Um, but before we dive into those examples, we're going to look at the built-in filters um, that P5.js gives us. So there's a command called filter, and we can specify from a range of different filters that allow us to transform an image. Um, these are really cool. They work really well. Uh, the limitation, of course, is you have much less control kind of over how they work, though being open source software, you could go in and actually see um, how they're being made in P5.js and implement them yourself or make changes or whatever. Um, so I've gone ahead and created some, a template here to get started, um, loading an image in preload. If you need a reminder of how to do that, you might want to check out the um, uh, collage examples from Creative Programming 1. Um, but I've got this here. I do want to make one change. However, if I run this code, my image is too big. And so it like spills over the sides. And um, there's a couple of ways that we could think about changing that. But in all of these examples, what I'm going to do in, in the setup here is first, I'm going to resize my image to fit the window. And then I'm going to resize my canvas to fit that image. That way, my image is fitting. And then my canvas holds the, the image in place. So I'm going to say image.resize. Now, we could be a lot smarter about this. Sorry, there's a cat down here. Um, we could be a lot smarter about this and get the like maximum between the width and the height of the window and stuff like that. But in this case, just as a shortcut, I'm going to just say that um, I want my size to be window width. And I'm going to set my height to 0, which means um, P5.js is going to scale my image proportionally. So it's going to stay the same proportion. And then I can resize my canvas using img.width and img.height. And so now when I run this, my image fits nicely on the screen. Um, we're going to do this for all the, the upcoming examples. So we won't talk about this again. And then there's one more thing to note. We're um, adding no loop here because we're working with static images. Um, in this case, it probably won't matter so much. But in later examples, um, trying to do this with the draw running over and over may slow down your sketch a lot. OK, so that's enough setup. Um, I've drawn the image on screen, and then the filter command is really simple. It's just filter, the name of the filter, and then some of them have settings that we can apply. So for example, if I say grayscale um, and run this, oops, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's gray, sorry. So this is a good example. Like, Keep the reference open. It'll help you remember. Um, it's gray. And you'll see it changes our image to grayscale. Um, now, a couple of things. One, filter comes after the image command because we want to display it on screen. And then filter is actually running over our whole sketch. So if I was drawing other colored elements on screen, um, it would make those grayscale as well. And then in this case, um, the grayscale filter has no arguments, no extra parameters to it because it's really just doing one simple thing. Um, in an upcoming video, we will implement our own grayscale filter at the pixel level, and we'll see ways that we can, um, different ways that we can achieve this. Um, another common filter that we will also be building ourselves is threshold. And what threshold does is it looks at the brightness of a pixel, and if it's above a certain threshold, it makes that pixel white, and if it's below that threshold, it makes it black. Um, in this case, it's expecting a value between 0 and 1. And so you can see here, it's converting into a binary, a black and white image. If I make this value lower, it will be overall brighter. If I make this higher, it'll be overall darker. Um, another filter I really like um, that we will also make ourselves is invert. This flips the colors. Um, you know, this is always kind of fun looking. Um, and then the blur filter is also a really useful one. We will make our own blur, um, but this one works really well. And we can specify the radius of that blur, kind of the amount it's grabbing from its neighbors um, with an argument like this. Now you can see blur is slower. It's a lot more work for your computer. And if I make this number lower, it's less blurry. 
don't remember what the max, there's a maximum amount here, I think, but um, yeah. And I've always liked blur is really cool. Then there's two more filters that I think might be interesting and that we will use later um, when we start doing computer vision. And those are dilate and erode. Um, so dilate, it's gonna be a little hard to see here. If we duplicate this filter, it'll run several times. And now that's kind of extreme, um, but what dilate does is it increases light areas of the image. Um, and this is really useful for um, in computer vision when you want to smooth edges or fill in holes. And again, we'll see that um, in an upcoming project. And then erode, we can add this here, oops, erode. Let's do a couple of these. Um, and erode is kind of the opposite. It reduces light areas. Um, and it, this is useful for um, like removing bridges between objects. If you're trying to identify two blobs, for example, and they're close together and they might sort of connect up, it helps separate those out. Um, and on their own, you know, filter and erode don't do a lot that we might need, but they're really, really useful when paired with other stuff. And a lot of this image processing um, leads into things we're gonna do in the next project. Um, where we're doing, yeah, like blob and color tracking and stuff like that. Um, so these are the built-in filters in P5.js. You can check out more about these. Um, I think that's most of them. Oh, there's posterizers, there's a couple other ones. So you might check those out. Um, but in the next, with all the rest of the videos here, we're now gonna be building our own. These are great, but um, we're gonna have a lot more creative control if we start having access to the pixels.